name is Jeff at Adventure Wagon. Today we're gonna to be going through the solar wiring installation in a Sprinter 144. Keep in mind that there is no real assembly to this kit. It goes straight into the installation into the van. So this is gonna take you through the installation of the solar wiring gland in the roof, the routing of the wires inside the van, and then the final connections to the battery system in the back of the van. You don't necessarily need to install the solar gland where we install it or route the wiring where we do, but this is our kind of standard practice. If you're installing your solar gland in a different place on the roof, you just need to make sure that your wire routing uh, works out to match that. So let's get into it and go over the tools that you're gonna need for this job. You'll need a heat gun, a cordless drill, a jigsaw with a metal blade, a fine file or some sort of die grinder to clean up the cuts uh, in the roof for your solar gland, Phillips head screwdriver, painter's tape to protect the, the paint on the roof when you're cutting for the solar gland, a punch to help you start your holes, a deburring tool, a hole saw, some three 30 seconds bits, a 13 millimeter wrench or socket for the breaker, wire strippers, wire crimpers, thread locker, rust preventative, some type of lubricant, in this case it's machine oil, but it can be just about anything, and isopropyl alcohol to clean the surface where you're going to be installing the solar gland. And of course, you're gonna need your solar wiring package, which includes your rooftop uh, wiring gland, your photovoltaic cables, your duplex wire to run inside the van, 40 amp breaker, and all of your butt connectors and everything else needed for this installation. Doug is gonna be in the video taking the installation from here, so let's get started. So we're gonna start up on the roof here. The first thing to do is clean the, the area. Uh, this kit is meant to put the solar gland in this general area at the front of the van, so uh, it doesn't need to be exact, but, but this general area that, that Doug is cleaning up is, is where you're gonna work. So right here, we just put some tape in the area. This is really just to, to protect the roof of the van for uh, when you're running tools over it and stuff like that, keep scratches from happening. And then we're locating the, uh, the solar gland area. We're gonna use it as a template for our pilot holes. We usually try to center in between the corrugations of the roof there and line up the front edge with the front end of the solar gland with the front edge of the factory roof rail. And we're just tracing out all the areas with a marker that need to be cut or drilled. Now we're going through and we're taking our punch to mark the holes. The punch is kind of nice because it actually helps the keep the drill bit from drifting. He's marking all of the holes that he plans to start with the drill bit, including the ends of the large center cutout uh, that he's going to be using the hole saw for. This is using our 330 seconds bit. We're just dr drilling some pilot holes for all the various screws that are used to, to mount the scan strut going in. Okay, now we're coming in with the step bit or the hole saw in this area. This is gonna, gonna drill out the ends of the actual gland hole here. And then from there, you just need to connect the straight lines to, to create your oval cutout. If you drift over the line slightly, it's not that big of a deal. If you stick to your line and, and just try to keep it clean, you'll be fine. So Doug came in here with a die grinder. If you don't have a die grinder, a file works here as well. He's just cleaning up the edge of the cut so there's no sharp edges or burrs. At this point, you can rem remove the painter's tape because we're done uh, cutting holes and drilling holes. So we came in here and did a second pass uh, with a deburring tool just to get some of the little shards that the die grinder missed. You may or may not need to do that. And now we're gonna come in here and uh, put some rust proof uh, sealant on the edges of the cuts and our pilot holes. Uh, this is the same rust proof that we use with our uh, interior conversion kit. It doesn't necessarily need to be this. Um, some sort of automotive enamel that you can put on with a brush. Uh, really anything that's just gonna seal the edge uh, will, do, will do a good job. Now it's time to stick on the first gasket for the scan strut gland. You just peel that backing off and it's got an adhesive on it. It's a good idea to come back through and wipe the area clean one more time to get rid of any grime on your hands or anything that may have been left behind when you were working in the area. And you're placing that, this gasket to line up with the pilot holes and the gland hole uh, as best you can. And you can press down firmly to, to ensure a good seal. Just check in uh, for alignment of our pilot holes with this base plate here. So now we're gonna screw down the base plate for the solar gland. This, this kind of provides the foundation for the rest of the solar gland to attach to. We're using a silicone sealant on the threads of the screws to make sure that those particular holes get sealed up and prevent any water from getting in. 
And you'll notice we're using a, a screwdriver, a hand tool for this. Because it's going into the sheet metal of the band, you just wanna be able to have control over how tight that's, that's going in. You use a power tool and it's set too high, uh, you can easily kind of blow out the hole that the screw is going into. And, and you gotta do a whole bunch of other stuff to fix it. So best to just use a hand tool for this and, and uh, tighten them down until they're good and firm, uh, hand tight. All right, so these are just going, uh, screwing down to the base plate, and you can put a little bit of your Loctite on these screws to make sure that they stay tight. Now it's time to drill the holes for your solar wiring. Uh, basically what, we're, what you're doing is trying to find a drill bit size that's just barely uh, smaller than the width of the wire that's going through. The wire that's going through again is the, the solar wiring that has that solar connection on the one end, it's the, the black wiring. So in this case a 1564 bit works well and we're just spacing those holes out appropriately. You can spray a little bit of that lubricant on the wire, you can spray a little bit right there in the hole as well. And that's just going to aid in fitting the wire through that gland. So basically, if you can get it through and it's really tight, then you know you know you're good. If it fits through really loose, then uh, the hole is a little bit too big. So you can use the wire chase uh, like the rest of the wiring kit in your adventure wagon system to run this solar wiring along the driver's side top corner. And you're going to run it back to the C pillar where the first vertical L track and A frame. And you're going to run it down that open gap the same way you used it for the cabin wiring harness and to your lower horizontal structure there and then back towards your used block location. Basically, you're tracing the other wiring that comes with the Adventure Wagon kit. But before you start on the fuse block connections, we're back up in the front. Now we're going to move into mounting our breaker. This is going to live behind the upper B pillar trim. We're just mounting it as far forward on this upper wall panel as you can get while still making it accessible when you take the cover off of the trim. Just double check to make sure that it actually fits when you try to put the upper B pillar trim back in place. And then we're crimping on some ring terminals to the positive photovoltaic cable coming through the solar gland and the red positive cable coming from the wall. And now we're connecting the two positive connections to this breaker. You can see the red positive cable that's coming out of the wall is going to the post on the bottom left corner of the breaker and the positive photovoltaic cable is going to be connected to the bottom right post on the breaker. And now we're coming back through and we're going to make the connections to the negative cables. So we're just going to butt connect the negative photovoltaic cable coming through the gland to the black negative cable running through the wall. When you're done with this section, all the cables are coming out of the roof gland and they're meeting at the breaker and then running back forward and upward to then run back down the wire chase. Now we're ready to make our final connections at the back of the van. So we're just taking our red positive extension cable with the ring terminal that should say positive solar MPPT input and we're butt connecting that to the red cable coming out of the wall and the negative cable coming out of the wall is gonna get that ring terminal attached to it and we're just going to connect it to the negative bus bar on the fuse block plate inside the wall. The negative cable is going to get grounded right here on the negative bus bar inside the wall. And as soon as that's tightened up, you can just replace the cover over that bus bar. The last step is to connect your positive cable to the Renogy MPPT charger. So we're just taking the cover off the left side. That connection is the top connection there. Ring terminal goes on, tighten it back down and route the cable back up and out of the case. And then it's a good idea to just attach it somehow to the charger plate with that other bundle of wiring with an extra zip tie. So that's it for the installation of your solar wiring kit. At this point, you can just put the cover back on your MPPT charger and continue on with the installation of subsequent electrical packages if you have those. For your solar panel installation, reference the manufacturer's guidelines for that. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out, give us a call or email us at info at adventurewagon.com and thanks for watching.